All right, sorry, everyone. Just checking to see if that music's coming through. Just trying um, uh, Twitch's soundtrack app. I wasn't sure. Seeing if I got that installed correctly. Bit of the old synth wave. Get started in just a sec. <coughs> hey, Scott, what's quite impressive? Ah, thanks. Hey, Rast. Can you guys hear music? Just let me know if it's too loud or if you can't even hear it. Yeah, I've got it pretty low. Not that I'm, you know, not that I'm doing this for, you know, entertaining you with music, but it's just nice to have something in the background. Apparently, this doesn't, um, this uh, this new Twitch one, doesn't um, record onto the recording. So, just let me know if it's annoying or if it's too loud. Um, okay, let's uh, let's get into it. So this week, this is where I got up to. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that. Um, um, I was working on the cape. I just press um, NQ to just disable the materials. Um, and the whole point of not just doing the helmet, because remember I started with just a helmet. The whole point was that I really wanted to, when I texture this, is to have some something a little bit more to be able to um, feature in my, you know, in my hero shots. And just doing a helmet without any body, it's not quite as impressive. I'm going to turn this music down for me. So, I had planned just to do, you know, the paulets and the, um, um, a bit of the cape and the chest plate, but obviously kept, <laughs> kept working down a little bit so I could get better, um, better options with the framing and the other point for me was wanting to explore ZBrush a bit more I bought ZBrush last year and I didn't really get into it too much so this year I really decided I wanted to get into it and now with the dynamic cloth um, I thought that's a great opportunity with the cape and with with some of this clothing it would be a great opportunity to spend some time in ZBrush and practice that and um, you know use it as an opportunity to um, to get better at it and uh, I've been really enjoying it so that cape's not the finished one I've actually been back into ZBrush and I'm doing some work in there so what I might do this morning is just do a little bit more work in ZBrush and I'm no means um, an expert I'm really I'm not a beginner but I'm not I'm, I'm pretty basic skill level in ZBrush but I'll keep working through it um, hopefully finish off that cape this morning um, I want to bring in the rifle strap because the straps will sit over the cape. Um, I may take that strap into ZBrush 
via GoZ and then just um, model some of the um, cape around the strap because the strap would push the cape down. Or I could just, you know, manipulate it here in cinema afterwards. And the, the last thing to do is actually just add the rifle in. Now I've been doing the rifle in Moai 3D. Um, where is it? Just uh, tinkering in the afternoons. So that's where it's up to. Um, I did have the idea of just maybe just doing it in NURBS um, and then just bringing that across to cinema and then just um, uh, leaving it at that, maybe unwrapping it and then just doing a, you know, a basic texture on it. Because I thought at first that you'd only see the stock, but you are going to see a little bit more. You are going to see this area here. You probably won't see this area here. So once the cape is finished, this is just the last thing that I have to do. And then I'm ready to unwrap and then take it into Substance Painter. This is Moai 3D. Yeah, Moai 3D is a NURBS based uh, modeling program. Look up on um, YouTube, um, look up Moai 3D and Aramis 3D has a good tutorial on the benefits of modeling with NURBS as opposed to as opposed to uh, polygon modeling. Um, the, in a nutshell, the key is with NURBS based modeling that you don't have to think about edge flow. You don't have to think about polygons because there isn't any polygons. It's just about blocking out the shape. Um, and you can get a you can get a fair bit done just using NURBS. You see I did these screws and you know this back plate and stuff like that. Um, although the actual stock here was modeled in cinema and I brought that across because I just couldn't quite I don't quite have the skills to model that in my 3D. So yeah so I'll be doing that um, once I finish the cape. So I'm going to just whip into ZBrush and continue with the cape. Um, and like I said don't really take this as a um, as me teaching you how to use ZBrush. It's more about um, me um, exploring myself and um, trying to get comfortable with the tools myself. But um, the workflow between Cinema 4D and ZBrush is uh, actually a pretty good one. I'm using the, um, the GoZ exporter and importer a lot. It's working really well. Because I don't have a lot of skills in ZBrush yet, um, I've done, um, you see I started, I laid out the cape here in Cinema, just laid out the basic um, edge flow and uh, the basic topology and then I took that across to ZBrush using um, the GoZ exporter. If I had enough skills in ZBrush I probably just would have just modeled that in ZBrush but um, it's nice I can use the I can use the skill set that I have with poly polygonal modeling in cinema and then just whip that across to ZBrush for the you know for the cloth and sculpting tools. So let's um let's just boot up ZBrush. See how far I can get with this. It's almost done. I mean, it probably probably is done, but I just want to just want to play around with a couple of the other brushes. Hey Ash, how are you going? All right, let's just get it across onto this screen. Whoa, check that out. Nice. Hey, VA Learn. I wish you guys would use your first names. I just don't know what your first names are. Unless you're comfortable, me comfortable calling you by your handles. Okay. So, let's, um, I'll come up to the light box and go to recent. So, this is the most recent cape. Right there, you can see I actually added a little bit of, you know, um, wind, you know, kind of effect blowing the cape around. I was really happy with the way this came out. Um, that was the, uh, the whole goal for me using ZBrush Dynamics, Cloth Dynamics to use the cape, uh, to do the cape and cloth brushes. And um, obviously I had to do the shirt and the sleeves um, before that. 
and I was happy with um, the result um, of those and it gave me a little bit of sort of base skill um, skills to attack this cape and it's not I mean it's not perfect but it's not bad main brushes um, for this I didn't actually use if I just come up to dynamics I didn't actually um, use a collision volume I thought of, I brought in this is a collapsed version of all of the other geometry um, that's just this Mando here I was going to use that as a collision volume but I ended up not needing it it was good to have it in here as a guide but it was it was more trouble than it was worth trying to use it as a collision volume because the this is like thick wool and it tends to sort of sit up anyway um, kind of sit up off the other geometry and when I was using um, the collision volume it tended to sort of stick to it even though you can actually there is an inflate property here and you can push it away um, so the main brushes I was using um, without dynamics um, were the cloth pull cloth pull is really good for things like drapes um, and I thought, well, this is the kind of drape, right? So it's draping down his back. Um, yeah, so the cloth pull, the cloth move, and the cloth smooth. This was really, really handy. So if I just grab the cloth pull brush, and I pulled my brushes down here into an extra panel. It's quite a handy thing to do. I know there's lots of keyboard shortcuts you can use. So with the cape selected, I've got the cloth pull brush, and I can just... See, I can just push that left and right, and that gives me those nice wrinkles. Now, the key here, this is one thing I learned um, from Mike Pavlovich, Pavlovich um, his tutorials, and it takes a bit of practice. The key is deciding on your subdivision level. So let me just make sure that's selected. Um, this one actually has already been subdivided. This was actually the one I took across to, um, I had to collapse down, collapse the subdivisions and then take this across to cinema. That ended up re I ended up continuing work on this by mistake, but I thought, oh, well, doesn't matter. Um, but this is the one that I actually took across to cinema. And this has the actual subdivision level. So if we come up to, come to geometry, uh, I should have them anyway, let's go. Uh, Sub tool geometry. Yeah, there you go. So I've got, I've got four levels of subdivision here, and I do have dynamic subdivision turned on. But let me just turn off dynamic, and bring that down to one. So that's basically pushing around the polygons that I had from Cinema 4D, and the key is for um, getting detail in your cloth is it's a combination of subdivision levels and firmness up here in dynamics. So if you want to make big overall um, shapes, then you want to use a low subdivision level um, and a higher firmness level. If you want to start adding in more detail, then you increase the subdivision level, see something like that. And if you want to add small details, then you drop the firmness down. But if you want to control how much detail, you can go at a higher subdivision but a higher firmness, and that way when you're pushing it around, see I'm, I'm just moving it some sort of more overall. Let me just turn on dynamic subdivision again. I'm just moving it in, it's more like the move brush in this case. There is a little bit of creasing going on, but as soon as I drop that firmness down, something like two, see I start to get more wrinkles. And this is what I found is the key to getting control because it can be a little frustrating um, trying to get the cloth to do what you want. But it's a combination of subdivision levels and firmness. If you can get that dialed in, then you can get a lot done just with these brushes. So I got this to a stage where I thought it was um, pretty reasonable. I'm just going to go back to my other one because I'd already done a bit more work on that. This one here. And I just wanted to do a, just a little bit more fine tuning uh, before I bring that back across to cinema. 
but overall very happy with it when I did this sort of shape here um, making it look a bit more dynamic it made me want to do the rest of the body but I don't have time for that yeah so cloth pull just to give the uh, the main wrinkles cloth nudge is really good just to sort of reposition and also cloth move just to just sort of sort of all overall movements just to push it into place um, and also cloth smooth because when you're when you are moving things around you can tend to do this to the edges you can see that see that little problem there but with the cloth smooth brush just holding down s um, holding down shift and just bring my intensity down with a cloth smooth brush you can just smooth out those edges which is really great so if you're introducing little little problems on those on the edges of the mesh that works really well just going to undo that so um that's overall where I am. In um, cinema, what I'll be doing is I'll be removing a few of these edges and kind of folding this underneath. I don't really know how to do that in, in uh, ZBrush yet. Um, so I might just do a little bit more fine tuning on this. I'm just going to duplicate this. And then I'll get this back across to cinema. I'm just wondering whether I should bring in the um, bring in the strap now. Um, what I might do is I'll take this cape back across to cinema. So just by selecting it, it isn't subdivided, so it's it's um, it's going to bring it across looking like this. So I'll just click on Go Z, come across to cinema. There it is, looking good. Now you notice it doesn't have any thickness because I didn't collapse the dynamic subdivision down, but that's fine. You can see how quick it is to bring it across from um, from Cinema 4D, uh, from from uh, Zebra, excuse me. I may want to bring it across a little bit over here, and I, may, I can adjust this. You know, Cinema has its own um, sculpting tools. I can adjust this. If I can just uh, zoom in on it. Just going to hold down the control key, middle mouse button. You know, I can always do uh, adjustments inside of Cinema as well. I love the little, I love the uh, the flexibility for me as a Cinema 4D user, being able to have Cinema, um, you know, bounce back between ZBrush and Cinema. That's really really useful. And yes, I know you can do this kind of stuff in Blender, but um, my current tools are ZBrush and Cinema 4D. I am looking into Blender, but I just don't have time to le relearn a new piece of software. And when I say that, I mean relearn a new piece of software, relearn the learn the tools, um, which respond which, which correspond to the tools I already know how to use in cinema. Okay, so where's the strap? Um, what I might do actually is open up. This is the one where I've collapsed everything down. So I'm going to come back to a previous version. That's 46, I think it might be 45. Yeah, this is the uncollapsed one. So So let me just close that other one up. Come back across to ZBrush, and I'll just 
drop that in in this uh, project just by once again clicking on go Z. There we go. You see how easy that is. And it does show you the polygroups as well. You can see you've got a ZBrush polygroup tag there. You can see I did have a polygroup around this section here just so it was easier to select with the masking so I could push that underneath um, inside of ZBrush. It's been a lot of fun doing um, ZBrush work over the last week or so because I've really started to get comfortable with some of the basics. And it's fun when you get to that stage with a piece of software. I've got so much further to go with ZBrush, but um, uh, it's quite liberating. You know, you know what it's like when you're learning software. Little wins. Um, when it gets a little bit easier to use, it's, it's a lot of fun. Frustrating at first, but it, um, it's very rewarding. Okay, so unsolo that. There's the Mandalorian. There's the rifle stock. You can see there's nothing else there. Might just come across to Moai 3D and just export that um, just to have it as a placeholder. Export. Oh, I've got, actually, I've got to open up the actual project first, of course. And let's see, file, export, still learning how to use my 3D. Export, select objects to export. Okay, well, I want to select everything. There we go. I want that as, a, I don't know, I guess an STL. I'll just stick that on my desktop. Okay, that's just giving me a little dialogue here. Um, I'll just say default settings. Back across to cinema, let's bring that in. Where did it put it? I have no idea where it is. It's probably tiny. Oh, there it is. What I'll do is I'll just press, um, I'll just click uh, reset PSR. Oh, there it is. It's, it is actually tiny. Is it really tiny? Oh, there it is. <laughs> so let's just center the axis. Want to use all objects, all points. Just bring that across to here, that'll do. a little bit smaller. This is just a stand in. I just want to see I want to see how it um, how it sits with the cape, um, and I'm kind of trying to, trying to decide whether I want to take that across to ZBrush and um, just manipulate the cape around it a little bit. Hey, 
Hey, Ghost. Most difficult software to learn? Um, well, I haven't tried Houdini. Apparently, that's really hard. Um, but yeah, ZBrush is challenging, but it's really rewarding as well. Um, I'm really enjoying watching um, at Mike Pav's um, tutorials. He's that guy really knows his stuff. <clears throat> and um, it just, you know, it doesn't get too bogged down in, in, in um, it's really focused on, um, on the key things you need to know. And when you look at his work, it's, it's incredible work. So if you're getting taught by someone like that, you're in pretty good hands. So I'm enjoying watching those tutorials. Um, it's a, it's a fairly difficult UI to understand, but as you, as you get into it, it becomes easier. Just going to rotate this into place. So I'm hoping to do the unwrap on this next week. Um, and then it'll just be all in Substance Painter, getting back into Substance Painter. That'll be fun, especially with the new version that's just come out with the new um, stitching and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, don't, I do know how to do stitching in um, Substance. I've done it before plenty of times using little plugins, but it'd be nice to have that built in. Check it out. That's not bad. So let me just get rid of um, that one. That can go for now. Uh, standard renderer. Okay, let's check this out. That's looking good. It's nice to have that little um, bit of detail on here. And look, it's all, it's all triangles, of course. Um, I'll need to decide whether I really want to you know, re-topologize this um, or whether I'm just going to be happy to unwrap it like this. Um, we'll see. We'll see about that. So that's actually going through his shoulder at the moment. just want to get this right so that I can get it. So it'll probably be back hanging like that. And if it was being held there, maybe the barrel would be rotated a bit more. Like that, maybe. I don't know, I've never held a rifle over my shoulder. And also the strap has to come down and I think it joins into here somewhere or somewhere on the end of the stock. Yeah, he's very fast, Ahmed. I agree. Mike is is pretty fast in the way he presents. Um, but uh, such a helpful guy. He um, he jumped online and did a a little live live thing for me when I had a question. Didn't even know me, so really appreciated that. Yeah, that's right, Ghost. Like I said, I'm still I'm still a novice in ZBrush, but I'm starting to get more comfortable with it. Like I'm not a sculptor; I've never, never finished, never done a sculpted piece. Um, but this this cape and stuff like that, the clothes in here, this is my way of sort of you know stepping into that area. I do love the combination of um, organic and hard surface because you know it can look it can look fantastic. Yeah. It just looks so much better. Let me get rid of that white material. It, I don't know, just the, the combination of the two is terrific. So that gun's looking really good at the back there now. So you can see how that, that framing will look really nice. I'll be able to get a bit of detail in there. Um, still a bit of work to do on that. But having like these mid shots I thought would be really quite good. I think that's probably about right. It's just sitting against the arch of his back there. Um, 
I think the strap would come down around into there. So what I'll do, there's my strap. I did actually model the strap before, but then I realized I would have to um, account for the um, cape as well. And you can see it's not actually rotated into the right position either. Dogs barking in the background. So let's see. Um, let me just bring that up. Let's see where that is. So that's you know, that's right across there, which is no good. And I have rotated this. This sits on a plate, and it actually does rotate. Um, so if I just grab this and this. not straight that's maybe I'll just grab this one where am I got buckle um, and I've got this little button in here as well that little piece there I might just stick that in there get the L key Let's get this reasonably straight. And where's my strap? There's my strap. I'll just stick that in there as well. I can rotate that. I do want a little bit of rotation in this because I like the way it sits. It's offset from this bottom bottom plate. Reference images kind of had it like that as well. So maybe it can do that. Uh, too, too much work, Ahmed, using dynamics for interaction. Unnecessary. Too fiddly. So I'm going to use my brush uh, in smear mode. Just going to bring this across. I could redraw it. I'm just being a bit lazy. So what I'll do... is just... Get rid of a few of these. It's always better to have less. MN. I could use a spline. So this is going to come down, down to here. I don't even know if you have to actually... I mean, maybe I'll have to just model in a... Um, a little uh, clip for it to sort of hook on to. I think it's somewhere around there. I might just have a look at my reference. Hang on a sec. Let's get the pure ref up. Uh, I've got a couple of these. Let's see. Um, I 
want to load them. How do I do that? Load. Load. There you go. I don't even know if I've got any shots of the how the rifle attaches to the strap. Yeah, there you go. So it's it is kind of at the base of the stock. There's something sort of going on in there. So I'm going to have to model something up with that. Um, It's interesting, the strap goes across to the left, but the, the rifle sits like it's rotated to the right. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me just undo that for a sec. See, I have got a buckle there as well, which I'll put in. Um, I'll add back in later. That's, that's perfect, actually. Just roughing this out. thing where I want to <coughs> manipulate it in ZBrush. I could I could do it in here, um, potentially. I haven't quite finished the modeling process in ZBrush yet. I think that'll work. We'll just sit back in there like that, just seeing where I would have to change the fabric and where I wouldn't. KL. I can add some kind of uh, clip in there. Even if I need to, you know what I mean? Um, I will decide on what my final framing will be. And if I don't, if you're never going to see it, 
then I probably won't even bother. Um, it looks so much better with the rifle in there, doesn't it? Wow. I'll probably end up adding a fair bit of detail into that rifle. Yeah, I might not even need the clip. No, I don't. I don't use the low, low, high poly workflow, Ahmed. Remember to um, join us on the um, Discord channel as well if you haven't already. We've got about 85, 86 people on there now. That's a bit twisted, that's fine. Um, I reckon that's pr pretty good. So if I just go Alt-3 using HB selector, uh, MC, the brush, middle mouse, drag to the left. Just want to see what I can get away with in here. Go grab. I'm in symmetry at the moment. I want to turn that off. I'm just going to grab one of the sculpting tools, just play around with this. I'm at, am I in symmetry? I think I am. Yeah, I am. Um, turn that off. So I could get away with it, you know, doing this easily doing this in um in cinema. Look at a different, a bunch of different shots. There's a few shots where um, he's wearing the rifle. He has the rifle strapped onto his back, and the cape is pushed across to the left. So you you see the little um, pouch here, um, and the rest of the bandolier and stuff like that. But I I just liked. I did see one shot where he had the cape on, and the strap was pulled across the cape. I just thought that looked a bit more interesting. So it's kind of pushed back to reveal some of this pouch detail. Um, still looks like it's sitting away from it a little too too much at the moment. So what I might do is just bring that across to ZBrush in a sec. I think it's got to sit down in closer. And it would pull away there because it's um 
sitting away from his body. Just select all of that. And I'll just use HB even distribution just to evenly distribute those. That should work. Uh, UI, try that. Ah. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Giles. Okay, so let's try it. I'm doing a little bit of sort of exploration with this. Um, Um, just get that into where I think is the right position. Probably needs to come down a little flatter there. I'm just so um, conflicted as to how much I want to push down this cape. But in the end, it would be pulled down quite a lot. This is where it'll test my my ZBrush skills. <laughs> now, obviously, we would say ZBrush in Australia, but um, everything I watch is um, ZBrush, ZBrush, ZBrush. So I just decided to, rather than switch between the two, just say ZBrush. I reckon that, that's a bit tighter, that's good. Maybe just a bit more there. And in here. Select those points just for now. Hold down the period key and drag to the right with my left mouse button held down. That will give me full weighting there. And I'm just going to quickly subdivide this to save a version. Just like that. Okay, so question will be will this drop it in the right place in um, in ZBrush so let's give it a try save that yeah, ZBrush does sound odd doesn't it okay so let's click on uh, goes the exporter Okay, let's put the rifle strap into a separate document. So, it's interesting. Um, how would I get that across to my other document? There's still a lot of uh, unanswered things for me in ZBrush.
So I've got that, but I don't have um, any of the other subtools in here. So so there's that. So I actually, I know, I know what to do. Um, append and click on rifle strap. There we go. Yay! I have learned something. Look at that. That's how you add a sub tool. So now I can, um, now I've got that strap into place pretty much. Now I can rework the cloth in ZBrush with that in place, which is pretty cool. I'm just going to save a version of this. Gonna get rid of this one. Delete. No, well there are now there are documents. Saving the document saves everything. I was watching Mike's um tutorial yesterday. Okay, so now how do I add a material, separate material to the rifle strap? I haven't done any training in materials. Yeah, I know, I'll click on the sub tool, yeah. And I'd forgotten that. Okay, uh, cape. Hold down the S key for the brush size. What I got? Cloth move. I'm just trying to get as far as I can with the actual cloth tools. Make no apologies for the ineptness that I display here. I'm still getting used to these tools. So I click on the M button at the top. So um, not quite following you, Ahmed.
I am. Right, okay, got you. All right. I'm still a bit rough with um there we go. I'll just leave it at that for now. kind of working I'll um, what I'll do Ahmed is I'll just I'll watch a tutorial on how to do that <laughs> that's probably the best option it's okay for now I'm just holding down the shift key just to smooth that out So definitely get a better result doing this over in um, ZBrush than I did in um, Cinema. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Ahmed. Do a quick save. It's all looking okay. Anchor, how are you going? 
do I feel knowing all three programs is necessary? Now, well, you can do sculpting in cinema. Um, there are booleans in cinema, but they're not NURBS. Um, I, I don't, no, maybe not necessary. It depends on the kind of work that you do. I just thought ZBrush would be, you know, a really good piece of software to learn, personally. Okay, so I'm just holding down shift to snap that. I just got to get it back to fairly close. Now I can snap it. That's it. I'm fairly comfortable with navigating now in ZBrush. That's a, it was a bit tricky at first. So what I might do now, and this is where I need a lot of practice, is um, just coming and grabbing some of these other, other brushes and then just sort of fine tuning this a little bit. You can get it to a certain point with the cloth brushes, but after a while, You'd really have to go in with the other brushes. Just bring that firmness down to one. Remembering that this is actually so like a thick wool. See, it's starting to act less like wool now because the firmness is too low. Just getting used to the different cloth brushes. Uh, let's try cloth move. You don't hear much about actual sculpting in Cinema 4 these days. Cinema 4D. You just it was it was I, I saw a fair bit about it when it was first released, but uh, you just don't hear much about people doing that in um, you know in cinema. Once this Mandalorian's finished, I'm going to get back onto the motorbike. I just try and, um, with these personal projects, try and bounce between different kinds of um, subject matter. The motorbike is a lot of hard surface modeling, and it doesn't really improve any of my, you know, sculpting skills. I'm purposely leaving this um, separated uh, a little bit because I'm going to round that out in cinema. Okay, so what I'll do now, I'll just uh, do a quick save. Um, I can use it all of the other brushes as well. I'm going to grab my Wacom tablet. Should be using my Wacom tablet anyway. No, oh, I'm using my mouse. Um, And this is where I, you know, I am really sort of practicing. Still, a, I'm still sort of like baby steps for me because when I get something that I think is close, I'm really loath to make any changes to it. And I think that just comes with experience.
doesn't need to be too much. So let's go. Um, I'll go with the uh, standard brush. Just want to exaggerate some of these areas. Remember, this isn't Cinema Four. This isn't ZBrush training. This is just me practicing ZBrush. So. I want to exaggerate this um, sort of stretching across here, holding down the Alt key so I go inwards. You really need to use a Wacom tablet with this. Having having pressure is really important. I find myself undoing a lot when I'm doing this kind of thing. If I can come into this one here, and oh, that's better. That's one of the things I've learned watching a few tutorials: is use the cloth brushes to get it as close as you can. Um, you know, using the dynamics and um, the power of the cloth, and then go in and just just fine tune. You know, using the other brushes. Tank destroyer, hey? Nice one, Joe. What are you using to unwrap it, Joe? I also love how responsive ZBrush is on my computers. Even on my laptop, I can get so much done.
Rhizome, yeah, excellent. That's my weapon of choice. I'll be unwrapping this in Rhizome. Using some new techniques I learned recently. I probably would have been able to do this um, to get this look using standard brushes, but it, <laughs> it would have taken me forever. It's much better to be able to use cloth. Let's bring that intensity down. Kind of like the way that's pushed down where the rifle would be sitting. See some of the stuff that um, gets done in ZBrush, um, you know, either through the actual application, the gallery, or through um, through Instagram. It's, it blows my mind. I mean, I don't know how artists actually find any work because there's so many good artists out there. The level of detail in some of these characters blows my mind. And I don't think, and I know that I won't be that kind of modeler. If I can master hard surface modeling with a little bit of sculpting. Um, I do love the sculpting. You know, the, doing sculpting like this um, in comparison to doing something like this Paul, Paul it, um, pauldron it's very precise there's no room for error but here it's very liberating because I've I got a Wacom pen you know and I can sculpt I can paint and it's you can't do that with hard surface it's a bit rough that I might see see the intensity of the smooth brush was on a hundred I never have things at a hundred Trying to get a few, get rid of a few of a little of these sort of um, chinks in this because um, it makes it look a little soft. So, like I said, this is very thick wool, and I've seen the reference images, and they they don't have that kind of chink in them. Now, keep in mind if you're interested in getting into ZBrush, there is a free version like a like a base version it's worth checking out like i said i'm not not very liberal with my brush strokes i'm still a little bit <coughs> a little bit tentative I'm sure that will come with practice <coughs> yeah I can't use a graphics tablet for hard surface modeling so what do I mean to do you want to press shift X <coughs> let me just save this Shift X. So why did I do that? Okay, 
and then shift X. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Clever. Hey, display 3D, how are you going? Shift X, let's do it again. Boop. That'll probably be pretty impressive when you've got lots of sub tools. I can use the damn standard brush as well and just make these a little deeper. I watched a flip normal. Uh, <coughs> break, my voice is breaking. I watched a flip normals tutorial on the. Um, I think it was like the, the six or or so most important brushes. Um, and Dan Standard was one of them. Now I do need to get these a little little sharper in here without affecting this section here. So I set that up, uh, set up some masking. Let me just auto save this, quick save. Uh, if we have a look at my um, polygroups, I've actually just added these little ones to a polygroup here. So if I just press um, uh, shift control and click on that, now if I press control, oops, uh, now if I just actually just press control and select that, that's masked, and click shift control again. And then if I press uh, control and click, that will reverse that. So now everything else is masked except this section here. So what I want to do is just get that damn standard brush and just come deeper into here. So what I'm sort of learning with ZBrush is everything is about selections and masking. Kind of like Photoshop, you get really good at selections and masking. Then you've pretty much got everything you need. Looks a lot better when these are a little uh, more uniform going underneath this other piece. Also down into here as well. I think that's probably masked a little bit too much. So I'll just um, reverse that. Oops. There we go. Just holding down the shift. Control click and drag just to get rid of that masking. That's better, isn't it? Around here. Move topological. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, I'm glad, Joe. I'm glad that helps you a lot. That's great. Okay, so the move topological brush. So that would be um, M. Hang on, where are my brushes? Uh, B. M. Ooh, okay. It's about a trillion brushes, so. Oh, wow, that's great. That's a great tip. Thanks, Ahmed. 
That is great. I had no idea about that brush. So that's basically clicking on the topology and that's got to isolate it. That is fantastic. Thank you. How long have you been using um, ZBrush, I'm in? That is brilliant. That's great. That's a great brush. I'm going to remember that one. Actually, if I come up to, let's see, um, preferences. Uh, where am I? Preferences and so I can remember how to do this. Uh, Face. I think I'll do that later. All right, config. Yeah, I never customize it, isn't it? I never customize. There we go. Um, grab that, and I should be able to put that over here. Oh, I've got to hold down the Alt key. Was it Control key? I'll do it later. But I can't add that. I'll do it later. Control Alt. Yeah, there you go. Had to hold both. There you go. Uh, only six months. Jeez, you, you've learned a lot. Yeah, I've I've avoided ZBrush for for too long. I can go a little bit deeper with these. See you, display. See you, Ahmed.
<laughs> no worries. My intensity up for that. That damn standard brush is great. I was able to get most of the way there with the cloth brushes, which I wouldn't have been able to do manually, and then just fine tune using the regular brushes. Once again, using the cloth smooth brush, smooth cloth brush allows me to get those weird edges sorted out. I wonder if I should bring this up. It's nice being able to have that cape sitting really nicely around that strap now. F just to fit that into the frame. Alright, okay, it's pretty close. I could mess around with this all day. Might just make these ones a bit deeper. So excited to um, texture this. Hopefully I'll be able to get the right um, look in Substance Painter. 
there's some really great frames um yeah some scenes in the mandalorian where the um the titular character is inside the razor crest and the lights from the actual um uh cockpit are shining off his helmet so you've got red and different colors so i thought i might um look into something like that Although if he was in the cockpit, he wouldn't have his rifle on. It's nice that damn standard brush allows me to really uh, give these... Um, wrinkles some definition. I love stuff suspended too. I like I like texturing models that I've modeled. Something really very cool about that. Okay, so um, what do you think about the cape now? Do you think it's looking reasonable? It looks like a cape, doesn't it? I am gonna, I am going to remove some edges in cinema and just roll these underneath because you wouldn't see these, these edges here. Yeah, I don't do much animating these days. I could model and texture all day. Yeah, just, um, Joe, just build in the work in progress. That's all, it's, it's all good. Just make sure you include your wireframes so everyone can take a look and we can give you some feedback. It's cheating if you don't show your wireframe. That's what the Discord's for, just to share your work. And, um, you know, everybody help everybody with recommendations of how you can get better. I sometimes make suggestions for people's um, topology and then someone else gives a much better option. And I learn something from it too. You've got to be, you've got to be confident. You've got to be um, not worried to look like a dunce. That's looking pretty good. Probably just uh, grab my standard.
Bring that move brush down. Actually, I want the standard brush. So I know it's not going to look um, perfect, but I just want it to look at least passable for a beginner. Or well, almost beginner. Let's bring this... Uh, That strap sitting okay now. Nice.
Hey, Bart. Haven't seen you for a while. I am going to be able to get a little bit more um, cloth um, texturing in this in Substance Painter, of course. Okay, I think I'm almost done. can just get that one out a little bit more maybe with the standard brush Does that look? A bit rough. And this is the first live stream where I've actually really only I've been confident enough to do any ZBrush. That's nice. Okay, so I 
I think that's reasonable. He's cutting across his neck there a bit, but that's okay, I think. Good. It's all in place for that strap now. It's sitting across there pretty nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to save that. And let's see. Come to my sub tools. Now, I haven't got any subdivision on this. It is dynamic, um, and you can see I have got thickness on it. Just to preview, dynamic's great for when you're doing um, cloth. That's how it's going to look under subdivision. Just quickly bring this out a bit. Okay. Once again, quick save, and I'm going to take that back across to cinema now. So that's selected, just click on Go Z. Tab. There it is, sitting exactly where we expect it to sit with that strap in place. So the workflow across from um, ZBrush to cinema is actually really good. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Drop it in a subdivision surface. And I mean it's not super high poly either yet. You know, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be that high. Okay, let's just um, put a material on there. I'm just going to get rid of some of these unused materials. Uh, edit, delete, unused materials. Actually, I don't want to do that because I need to use this. NQ. save that. It's really important to have a look at this as a matte material. So I'm just going to switch this across to Redshift. Thanks, display. Now I'm not going to work on Substance Painter today because I have to unwrap it first. So next, um, next Saturday will be unwrapping. And then um, the following weekend, we'll be 
me and substance. It's pushing through that um, geometry bit there. That's because never we saw it with thickness before. I think that'll work. Okay, so I'm going to save incremental and Q. Now just going to add some thickness to this. Now, I could have just brought it across from um, ZBrush with thickness. Let me just grab all of this. Alt 3, select it all. Push that up a bit. Now, if I brought it across from um, uh, ZBrush, I would have had to delete that bottom face, but here, just by using extrude without create caps on, I didn't need to do that. Oh, don't want to do that. Let's go back out of Redshift to standard. Now, I am using R23 here, by the way. It's been more stable since I... Um, since uh, AB and I, my um, my friend Andrew and I, adjusted the uh, NVIDIA settings, OpenGL settings. You can see it's actually um, got some fong breaking errors there, so I'll just turn off uh, angle limit. It's better. So now I just want to curl um, curve it. Um, around a little bit to make it look a little more uh, real around the edges. So I'm just going to save this. I'm just going to dissolve a few edges. MN. What if I get rid of that one as well? MN. If I scale that in, And then D, I'm just coming closer with the shift key held down just to rotate that in. See what I'm going for? I just want it to be more rounded like that. It's not going to be ideal in everywhere, you know, in the whole, around the whole thing. Some might be uh, intersecting in some areas. I'll just solo that. You see what I'm going for? It's just a more rounded look. Like it's got a curved under.
like that. That looks good. There it is intersecting in certain places. That's okay. Whoa, check that out. That went a bit crazy. That's going mad. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. MC, uh, let's get that a bit smaller. Come into smooth mode, just smooth those out. Try that again. Because I don't want the bottom, the back face, because that will just be wasted space on my um, UVs. I'm getting some intersections in certain places. So it's not always ideal to do extrusions, um, although that will be hidden, that will be hidden under there. Done that again. Okay. Okay, so MC, this time I want to be in smear mode. I do tend to use the brush tool more than the modeling tools. Just going to shift this around a little bit, make sure that it's not, um, oops, intersecting anything. Trouble is jumping back and forwards from um, ZBrushes. I'm using the ZBrush shortcuts. Trying to move it around without mo losing the detail. Okay. 
Okay. Now the strap does have to be extruded. Alt 3 just to select that. Using HP selector. I'm not using HP modeling tools, just make sure you check out the QR code to the um, right of the screen. Now I want to put create caps on. It's already in place in the buckle here, so I'm just going to um, bring the clip, just going to bring that up. Actually, before I do that, probably what I want to do um, is grab this one. Uh, and just rotate this into place. Actually, I might just select it all. Still really shit at um, getting my axes into place. There we go, that's better. That'll do. All right, so uh, maybe just a bit more. MO, hold down shift and just pull that up.
All right. Day. Angle's not quite right. It's going to squeeze that into there. Rotate that a bit.
Right, it'll probably do. Took a bit longer than it should have. All right, so. One thing I didn't do here was dissolve a couple of these edges. Just to round this out a bit more. That's better. Probably this side too. too much. Just select that loop. I might just MZ just to push that out on its normals. Uh, MC Funny, I'm using the mouse and I've still got the pen in my hand. Middle mouse button. It's going to bring these down. Bit of wind blowing that up. I might just, uh, let's see, grab that, solo that. Where is it? Probably just grab a few edges here. Bring those ones in. No sense putting a loop all the way around. Are you going to see that? I think I've got to go in quite far. Just put a loop in there. Like that. That way I can hide that. Um, without putting a loop all the way around, it would be just a waste. If you're not going to see it, don't put it in. MC. Uh, let's see, deselect all. I'm just now, this is just to sort of like the finishing bits just to make sure things aren't intersecting. Might be nice to put a few, a little edge along there as well. D. To round that out. You see how close we can get to that. It's pretty nice. I probably need to add a control loop to this to this. Not too, I don't want to have it too sharp. You see how we got, you know, 99% of the way there in ZBrush. And now I'm just sort of fine tuning.
probably need to grab a couple of those edges too. Let's just check. Yeah, probably those ones as well, actually. Just bring those in D. Let's do that once more. ME polygon pen. Just stitch that to that. That's got that extra loop there, so I'll just add an extra loop in here. ME. Is that going to reach? Come on. Okay. I've got Z turn off. Bring this one down a bit. See how useful HB Solo is just to um, isolate that in the view. MC. I might just bring that brush size down a bit. Just sort of pinch this in a bit. That's okay. looking good around there. Is it all tucked in in here? Probably close enough. Maybe just bring that back a bit. I'm not going to see that. That's all pretty good around there. Everything's fine back here. You're only going to see probably that low about there. Not going to see this lovely swoosh down here. Bummer. Okay, the strap is in place. And probably either bring the cloth down or the strap up. Probably the cloth down. I think that looks pretty realistic the way that's pushing that apart, sort of flattening it out and pinching it up there. I'm not an expert with cloth, but. That looks pretty good. How is it up here? Where does that loop go? All the way around there. What if I dissolve that one? It's going to look bad. I think I'll leave that. May just push this one back a bit. Oh, 
just to round that out a bit. I mean, you're hardly going to see that. So I reckon the cape's probably done now. Um, might just bring these down a bit. Oops. Okay, there we go. Same with these. Have I got one on that side? I might want to just add another one just in here. That's intersecting a bit as well. May just bring this down a bit. Holding down the control key just to drag the extra loop out there. M E K L. If I go turn on point snapping, I can just snap to that point there. That's it. Select these two. M Q and just click to weld those. That is intersecting there, so I'll just quickly grab these, pull these up. Nice big soft brush. Make sure I've got no points selected. So just using cinema just to you know, using the brush tool just to manipulate this. Okay, so let's see that's a little more rounded there now. I like because um, I purposely sort of left this open a bit so you can see some of this detail on the flak vest. Would have been easy just to have this cape come all the way over the pauldron here and just <laughs> hide all of this detail. So the next thing to do is, um, I might just pull this out, is just finish the rifle. Once I finish the rifle, this is ready to unwrap. Just bring my brush in a bit smaller. Just bring this in closer. That's a long one today. I'm going to finish up in a sec. So this week what I'll do is I'll attempt to finish the rifle in my 3D. And um, I may just bring it across to cinema and just re-topo onto it. I'll, I'll decide what I want to do with that. Nice to have the cape done, and I'm really glad I was able to do that in ZBrush. Looks weird with um, a, a glossy, a glossiness to it. Looks much better when it has um, a matte finish. But almost done. Going to get some good framing with this.
probably need to pull that um probably need to pull this down a little bit just save this Doesn't want to rotate. It's a bit slowed down a little bit. Um, let's try that again. Grab this one. Turn off snapping. Grab these ones and I'll just add an extra edge in here, extra loop, just control dragging. Try to get that a bit more thickness in there. Just pull that down a bit. That's okay. Next door neighbor has just started with the leaf blower, so it's probably time to bow out. So yeah, so that's it. So like I said, next week we'll get into the um, uh, the rifle. Just um, maybe doing a bit of retopo on that. I don't need everything. I probably just need down to about there. Um, but there's a little fair bit of detail in there. So I figured if I had it done in my Moai 3D, then I could come in here and just do a bit of retopo on it. Because you will, if I want to get some nice close-up shots, um, it will need to be pretty good topology. Although it doesn't look bad, but obviously it needs um, it needs bevels and uh, it needs a bit of work. So um, thanks for hanging out, everyone who is still with me. Um, and I'll... Um, I'll see you in the next stream.